Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Obviously, we've got a new season now live. Season four is here. And with that, we got a bunch of new weapon tuning. We got some attachment tuning. And as we've been talking about over the past few days, the meta is a bit different here in season four than it's been in previous seasons. And by far, without a doubt, the most competitive weapon category right now is the assault rifles. We saw the AMAX nerfed, we saw other rifles buffed, and of course, all the attachment changes with all the Cold War barrels also changed things up quite a bit. So the AR category right now is very competitive, and today we're breaking down and ranking every single assault rifle we currently have in the game, just over 20. And we're also breaking down the best class setup or the best loadout for some of the top and meta weapons that we have right now in the assault rifle category. So if you enjoy the video or if you find it helpful, let me know by dropping a like on it. it would be seriously appreciated. And of course, if you're new to the channel or if you haven't already subscribed, I am always covering everything going on in COD. News, intel, updates, loadouts, it's all right here. So feel free to subscribe. That way you can always stay up to date. All right, so we're here back on Tier Maker. I've gone ahead, I've made a new custom uh, like list here. It's got all 21 rifles that we currently have in the game, including the brand new C58. We've got our uh, six categories here. We've got top or meta, so this will be the best of the best. You have no reason to use anything else other than that. Uh, we've got competitive, which means it's very, very solid in this meta. You can use it, you're gonna do well with it. Uh, we've got viable, which means it's usable, but it could be beat out by something in competitive or top meta on a relatively consistent basis. We have below average where you could get some kills with it, but chances are you're going to be better off using anything higher than that. We've got niche, which is not a bad category. It just means it's really, really good in very specific situations. It's not good as a very versatile and overall weapon. And then we've got garbage. You never want to use it. I would never recommend. So we'll just go in order of what we have here on the list. We start off with the Krig here. And honestly, with the barrel updates of, uh, of Season 4, the Krig, I feel like, just becomes even better. It was a pretty solid rifle before. A lot of people were saying it was uh, sort of like the AMAX, just slightly weaker. Like, it was really good at a range. It was very easy to use in a lot of regards. It's a pretty aggressive rifle, too. It's got pretty good mobility. Uh, but it just didn't have the power that something like the AMAX would have. And thus, you didn't really have a reason to use the Krig over the AMAX or over some other rifles. But now, uh, with all the balancing and with all the attachment changes to Season 4, I would say at the very least, the Krig is definitely competitive. I mean, now you get the recoil control on the barrels, you get that added velocity, that added range. Like, it's really, really nice. Like I said, it's got good mobility, so now you have the mobility, the range. The power is still not the best, but because you have these other factors, you're able to land shots very easily. And in turn, uh, the TTK on the Krig is actually pretty competitive. So I think competitive is a solid spot for it right now. Uh, we'll see as we play certain weapons here if things need to change. If it's like, oh yeah, this weapon is definitely in a higher tier than this. We'll see as we get through. Uh, but next up, we've got the Pharah. And honestly, this is a tough pick for me. I want to say it could be meta right now. And when I say meta... It's not necessarily like it's been in past seasons, right? When you'd say the meta in Season 2, it was like, okay, it's the AUG, it's the M16, it's the FFAR. It's absolutely the most dominant gun in the game, right? The Fair is not the most dominant gun in the game. It's not the most dominant rifle in the game, but man, is it good right now. And the beautiful thing about this meta is that just because the Fera is so good doesn't mean you can't use the Krig. Like, I would still uh, use either of these weapons if, uh, if I'm jumping on and say, hey, I want to use something different today. I can use the Krig. I know I'm still going to fry with that. But the Pharah right now, man, the barrel update just made it even better. I was a big fan of the Pharah previously just because it has no recoil. This thing is a laser beam. You can add on a grip. You can add on the Suset. It's going to just fry at all ranges because you don't have to do anything to control it. When you factor in the power, when you factor in the overall TTK it has, this is a really, really good gun to use right now. So for the moment, I'm going to keep it in top meta, but I don't think that's uh, that should necessarily, uh, you know, discredit some of these other guns that we're going to have in competitive as we get throughout the list. Uh, next up, we got the XM4. I'm again going to put this in competitive, uh, but for a different reason than the Krig. The Krig is a good overall rifle. Uh, usually, you probably wouldn't be using it in close range fights. It's more so meant for medium and long range. The XM4 is the opposite. I wouldn't really use the XM4 at range. Instead, I'd be using it for close range and for some closer medium range fights. I'd basically be using this as a, uh, as a secondary rifle. Of course, we've had this double AR meta for quite some time in Warzone. It's not nearly as strong as it was before, but the XM4, I feel like, is predominantly used as that close range secondary. You build it out for speed, and it's going to be really, really good. A lot of the top tier competitive Warzone players use the XM4 as a secondary right now. And uh, with the update, it actually got a neck multiplier increase. Of course, it's uh, also got the same barrel buff. So I'd say right now it is competitive very, very easily. The FFAR is kind of a tricky choice because, yes, the FFAR is good. Um, it's still one of the better close range rifles, very similar to the XM4 in that department. But am I using the FFAR over 
the XM4. That's my big question here. I'm tempted to drop it in viable for the time being, but it is very borderline competitive or viable. Like it, it is right there. I think we're going to leave it in viable for the time being. And as we put other weapons into viable, if I'm sitting there saying, okay, I'll use the FFAR over this, I might bump it up to competitive. Uh, of course, it's got the fire rate. Uh, the mobility is not nearly as good, even when you do build it to be a bit faster. So I think for now, I'm liking the XM4 over the FFAR, but we're going to see where this lands uh, as we get later on into, uh, into the video. Next up, we have the QBZ. And unfortunately, I, I think I have to put this one in below average. It's great for mobility. It's one of the faster Cold War rifles we have. It's not the hardest weapon to use. I mean, the recoil is really good, but it just has no damage. Like, this thing does not hit hard at all, especially when you compare it to other rifles. I mean, and it, it suffered the same fate all throughout the Cold War integration so far. The QBZ has been a bottom tier rifle just because it doesn't kill fast enough. I don't, I don't know what it is, but every, every buff they give in the QBZ is just not the right buff. So I think for now, I have to leave it in below average. Nothing right now says, hey, you should really use the QBZ over this rifle, over that rifle. So I feel for that reason, it's got to be down lower. Uh, the Groza actually improved quite a bit with the uh, with the Season 4 update. I think it's got to be in the competitive category right now. It's a rifle that you could actually use for quite a few different situations. I wouldn't say it's the best long-range rifle out there. Uh, there certainly are better alternatives, the Krig, the Pharos, so on and so forth. But uh, like the XM4, it's really good up close. Medium range, it's also really, really good. I'd say that's where it thrives the most, honestly. Um, and it's relatively easy to use. You know, good fire rate, pretty minimal recoil. So I'd say the Groza right now is feeling pretty good. I go back to wondering where the FFAR needs to land so far. That's, that's definitely the biggest question mark for me as of right now. But we'll see uh, where we get throughout the video. Then we get to the Cold War AK-47. We know it's that because it's level 55. That's the max. The uh, the Modern Warfare 1 is 68. Almost nice. Uh, but the Cold War AK, definitely competitive. Borderline meta, I would say, honestly. That's another sort of tricky one where it's really right on the uh, right on the edge of both. They're just like the FFAR with viable and competitive. For now, we're going to leave it in competitive because I do think uh, for the most versatility, I'm probably going for the Farah over the AK-47. But... The AK has a great TTK. It's one of those weapons that you could use at a range if you wanted to. Um, it could honestly almost take this uh, place of the AMAX now uh, because of the AMAX nerf. But the AK-47 at a range is going to be a bit harder to use. Uh, the control is a bit more difficult, especially when you put on different attachments. But for close to medium range fights, just like the XM4, just like the Groza, and almost even just like the FFAR, this thing is very, very good. A lot of pros are using the AK-47 as another secondary rifle, but now you could also use it as that primary if you wanted to because of how things have changed with the barrel updates. So the AK, I also think, is probably in competitive. Then we've got the Scar. Of course, this was buffed with Season 4, but it doesn't have a big mag. I want to say it's probably best placed in niche, but I think for the time being, we could probably put it in viable. I mean, in solos and in duos, you could definitely use this thing, and because it's better than just in solos, um, I, I'd say you could probably use this in, in multiple situations, whereas niche, I feel like is just meant for one game mode, one game mode alone, right? Um, uh, but the scar, like I said, it doesn't have that large magazine and that's what I feel like holds it back. The damage on it is pretty good. You know, it's gonna, it's gonna kill relatively quickly, but you're not able to get triple kills squad wipes with this thing. Like you would other weapons that have larger magazine options. So for now, I just say you could use it. You could do all right with it, but there definitely are better options. So I feel like viable is probably a pretty good place for that. I would probably take it over the QBZ though, just because at least the Scar can actually kill something. Now, the Ram. I must say top meta. Hear me out on this one. The AMAX and the Ram, I was bouncing back and forth with a lot back in previous seasons, specifically in season three, or both were really, really good rifles. Uh, the AMAX was definitely really good for long range fights and some medium range fights. The Ram was honestly pretty usable all around. Close, medium, long range didn't really matter because the fire rate and the mobility that it had. So the Ram was a very competitive rifle. The AMAX previously I would probably have as the best rifle in all of Warzone, but because of that nerf, it's no longer there. The Ram, though, was not nerfed, it was not touched, it wasn't really changed at all in the Season 4 update, so in turn, I feel like it's got to take that place, and I feel like top meta is probably the right spot for that one to land. Now, the Modern Warfare M4A1 has been a great rifle all year long, ever since Warzone dropped, the M4 has been uh, in the conversation in terms of what rifles are actually going to be viable and competitive. This is sort of a tricky one, though, because I feel like it could land in either category, but for now, I'm going to say viable because I do feel like I'd be taking the AK or the Krig over the M4, particularly the Krig, because that's what's going to match up with it the best, I would say. So 
For now, it's inviolable, but the M4A1 is certainly not a bad rifle. It's been very consistent and very reliable all year long. The FR556 might be the only gun in garbage. I'm not gonna lie. I just, I don't see the FR556 being in a place where it could compete with most other weapons. The only argument I feel like this gun has would be below average, but I feel like that's overhyping it. I just, this gun's not fun to use in my opinion. The burst rate is very, very slow. Like the overall fire rate is not ideal. You compare it to other burst rifles, uh, like the M16, like the AUG, you'd say, okay, statistically it's all right, but it just does not feel the same to me. Um, like I said, the slower fire rate doesn't really do it for me. The recoil on it is not the worst, or the burst recoil uh, is not the worst, but it's also not the best. Like. I just don't see the FR556, the FAMAS really having anything going for it. So I must say garbage, maybe below average one day, but I, I hate this gun. <laughs> it's just plain and simple. I don't like it. I'm never using the FR556. At least if, uh, if there's ground loot, I'll pick up the QBZ. I would never pick up the FR556. I'd go for the pistol instead. So it's got to be garbage, man. Uh, Odin. This is a tricky one because this could very easily fit in niche because it's such a slow firing, heavy hitting weapon, but probably below average because you could use this in quads you could use this in trios solos duos uh obviously it's not going to do great in trios or quads because it doesn't have a huge magazine but you can at least get a decent amount of kills with this thing because it is so powerful you know the damage output on this thing is uh is pretty nutty but it's uh it's it's checked and it's in balance because it doesn't have a large magazine it doesn't have a good fire rate and the recoil on it is uh is less than ideal to say the least but it's usable for sure. I, th I feel like below average is a solid place for it to be in all honesty. The M13, I know I'm probably gonna get some heat for this. I feel like it's just viable. I really don't think the M13 is that competitive. Uh, yes, it is a very easy weapon to use. And because of that, a lot of players like the M13. Of course, you don't have to do anything to control the recoil on this. It's straight vertical. Like you can make this thing uh, look like it has no recoil. It's so easy to use. The damage output on it though is really not that impressive. It's uh, it's a good long range rifle. Like uh, I think past like 40, 50, 60 meters, it will overtake some other rifles in terms of TTK, but that's uh, that's a pretty specific criteria to have to be considered a really good weapon, right? Like the majority of your fights aren't always gonna be that long range. Like the most ideal fights are in that 20, 30, 40 meter range. Most of the time, that's where you're gonna probably be the most accurate. That's where it's the easiest to stay on target and to trace enemies. And where the M13 is, in uh in those in those areas is not necessarily the most competitive so i feel like it's usable but there are definitely are uh, are some better options the kilo i would say is going to fall pretty much in the same place especially with the additional damage drop off nerf that it got back in like what season six of modern warfare i believe uh ever since then the kilo has been usable and a lot of players do still use it because they're familiar with it and they're comfortable with it but in terms of a competitive ttk the kilo doesn't necessarily have that. Uh, the range, especially now because that extra damage drop off is not the most ideal, but I'm taking it over the QBZ, the Odin. It's way more reliable and consistent than either of those. Definitely over the FR556. I feel like it matches up very nicely with a lot of these other viable weapons, particularly the M4A1. And honestly, looking at the rest of these, the Grau can fall in the same place. And that, I feel like, is a lot coming from me because you guys know I absolutely love and adore the Grau. It's my favorite gun. But uh, statistically, it just can't match up with some of these other weapons. Uh, I'll use this a lot on, like, a fully loaded loadout, as you guys have seen in my previous loadout videos, because it's reliable and I'm, uh, I, I, I like to think I'm very good with it. But um, when it comes down to what I'm going to be using throughout the entire game when I'm trying to frag out and drop a 20 bomb, a 30 bomb, go for a PR, the Grau is not that. The Grau is a fallback. Okay, I need something that I know I can do well with. I need something to hold me over until I can get an AK or a Ram or a Farah. The Grau would probably be my choice for that. And for that reason, I'd say it's probably the best viable gun. Uh, the order here doesn't really matter, but I do just want to point that out real quick. The Grau, I would say, is probably the best of the mediocre weapons, if that makes any sense. Now, the Modern Warfare AK, I feel like you could say it's below average and you could just leave it at that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it in viable, but... It's borderline below average for what it's worth. Uh, it's usable. The recoil really is not too bad on it, but uh, we're in the state here where you could use the Modern Warfare AK, but you have no reason not to use the Cold War AK instead. Like the these uh, these two versions here are not equal in the slightest. The Cold War AK is superior in many different ways. The damage, uh, the way it handles, the mobility, like every single day of the week, I'm taking the Cold War AK over the Modern Warfare one, but the Modern Warfare 1 is not a bad weapon. If you were trying to only play with Modern Warfare weapons and you wanted to use the AK, you could get by with doing so. Again, same argument as before, you just have better options here. 
Now the A94, I feel like it's starting to become cliche to say it's viable, but that's really just what it is. Uh, it's a bit underrated, especially for close range fights, especially because that hyper burst feature can really make it uh, very competitive in those CQB areas. But uh, medium range, its damage really isn't anything to write home about. Long range, same deal. Uh, but it's got the larger magazine, it's got the recoil, it's really not too bad, not too hard to control. Uh, so it's usable, again, not the best choice, but you could get away with getting a few kills. Like you could definitely use this in any mode and it'd be just fine. The aim Max, yes, it got nerfed. No, it's no longer in top meta for the AR specifically. I'd say it's still competitive though. I mean, the TTK on here is still one of the best in class. It's going to take that extra shot. And of course, the TTK is not going to be as good as it was back in season three or season two. Uh, but it's still a very good rifle, especially for medium and long range fights. Of course, this is not ideal for close range whatsoever because it's not the fastest and the fire rate really isn't super good. Uh, that's where you'd be looking to things like the XM4, the AK, the Groza, even the Ram 7. Uh, but for a longer range meta, the AMAX is definitely very, very competitive still, uh, even outside of its class. It can compete with other LMGs and other long range weapons. So uh, I would say it's definitely still competitive. If it were to get another nerf in the future, then yeah, it's definitely dropping down to viable. You know, if the TTK got any worse, the shots to kill got any worse, it's probably gonna drop down more. But where it's at now, I feel like it's pretty balanced. I feel like the, the chest multiplier nerf and the chest damage nerf is really where they needed to look to initially outside of just the headshots. So uh, after that's finally happened now here in season four, it's definitely in a solid place. I feel like in competitive. Now the FAL downright is competitive, but I'm not putting it in competitive. I'm gonna put the FAL in niche, honestly. One, because I need, feel like I need to fill up this category so I can't just have it empty. Uh, but also it is probably the hardest rifle to use. It's the highest risk, but it's also the highest reward. The TTK on the FAL close range is very good. Medium range is very good. Long range is very good, but semi-auto. It's not easy to stay on target. It's not easy to trace enemies. Every single weapon on this list, honestly, outside of the FR556, I would say is gonna be way, way easier to use. And even the FR556 could be easier to use, but it's not gonna be as efficient. So it stays in garbage. There's no changing that. Uh, but the FAL, because you do have to spam your trigger or spam your mouse click, it's not gonna be fun to use close range, medium range, or long range because you have to put that extra level of effort into actually making it viable and making it good. So for that reason, I'd put it in niche. It is very good in a lot of areas, which is sort of the exact opposite of niche, but because its, uh, it's skill gap is so high, only a very few select players are able to use this and actually do really, really well with it. Now the AS Val, as we know on the main tier list with every weapon in the game is in niche. I feel like it still belongs here, but specifically looking at the assault rifle category, I'm gonna put it in competitive with an asterisk. If you're playing solos or duos, it is competitive. If you are playing quads or trios, it's probably niche or maybe even below average just because the ammo capacity on this thing is so, so bad. You shoot one person, you shoot two people max, you have to stop, you have to reload. It's recoil in medium and long range fights is really not good. Uh, so it's gonna bounce back and forth here between competitive and between niche depending on what mode you're playing. Solos, it is probably the best weapon to be using, uh, particularly as like a secondary, I would say. Uh, I wouldn't be using the Val as a primary unless you're using it as like maybe sniper support. Uh, but because of that uh, hindered magazine uh, capacity there, because you don't have any ammo, and because the recoil on it is not very good, it's gonna drop severely when you start running into more players at a single time. So trios and quads, this thing is not competitive, but for the sake of it being an assault rifle only tier list, we're gonna use this as a, uh, as a competitive standard because in solos and duos, it is very good. And then finally, we've got the C58, which for the time being, I'm gonna say is top meta. I think this is one of the better rifles in the game right now. It just feels so good. Close range, it's not gonna be the best because it does have that slower fire rate, but you could try and get away with using it if you absolutely had to, but really medium range and long range is where this thing is going to absolutely thrive. It's gonna feel really, really good in those situations. And it's honestly up there with the Farah, in my opinion. I know certain people will argue otherwise, uh, but statistically, it is very good. Physically in game, it feels very good. The recoil is next to nothing. It's so easy to use. Uh, the velocity is okay on it. Like all around, the C58, I feel like is a very well-balanced rifle. And just because it is in the top meta category, uh, I wouldn't say it's broken by any means. I don't think any of these three guns are broken. They're just all very efficient at what they're meant to be used for. So um, personally, if I'm jumping into Warzone right now, if I'm sitting down, I'm saying, okay, I wanna go for high kills. I wanna try and push things and be very aggressive. The first three weapons I'm looking to be using are the Farah, the Ram, and now the C58. The Krig, also very good. The XM4, everything in competitive, 
I could also sit there and say, okay, I'm going to use this, and I know I can do well with these because these weapons are going to behave and perform very uh, well in game. You get into viable, it's like, okay, I can probably do well with these, but if these guys on the other teams, on the other squads are using a Krig or a Farah or a C-58, I'm probably going to be in trouble. You get into below average, and you're just like, okay, I want a challenge. I'm going to try and use something that's really not that good and see if I can do well with it. There's no reason to use either of these. The FAL is like, okay, I want to see what I can do with a hard weapon. That's what you're looking at with that. And then if you just don't want to play Warzone and you're trying to get into low tier uh, skill lobbies, if you're trying to go down to bronze, just use the FR556 for a week straight and uh, the game will probably feel bad for you and put you there. All right, now we're going to look at some of the best setups for what I think are probably like the top five or six rifles. Uh, we've got the Pharah, the Ram, the C58, obviously. And I also want to break down a setup for the Krig, the XM4, and the AK because those are what I feel like are probably going to be uh, the best options overall. So... First up here on the Farah, pretty standard setup that we've been using for a bit now. We've got the Gru Suppressor because we are using this at a range primarily. I use the RPK Barrel. Yes, you are going to have uh, not the greatest mobility in the world, but you're going to get that recoil control that really makes this thing have no recoil whatsoever. And you get the better velocity and the better range as well. You could probably go for Liberator or even Takedown, but I feel like the RPK Barrel is probably the most rewarding and most effective. Personally, I use the Tiger Team. This by no means is a necessary attachment if you really wanted to. You could go for like the, uh, you could go for the Spetsnaz Grip. You could go for the Skeletal Stock or even the Serpent Wrap to get some better mobility uh, out of that or some better control out of that. But I like the Tiger Team because I do like to run around with these if I'm late game and we're in like a more open area. And having that better mobility, I feel like is, uh, is pretty crucial, but by no means is that a super necessary attachment. I've also got the three times optic on there. And then finally, I've got the 60 round mag as well. Then for the C58, again, we've got the agency suppressor because we are using it at a range. Same deal with the task force barrel. It's the same thing as the RPK barrel. Uh, same pros, same cons. It's gonna really uh, bring it out to be the most effective at those longer ranges. Uh, personally, I don't think you need an under barrel because like I said, the recoil is so easy here again. You could use one if you wanted to, but personally, I think you're better off going for the 55 round mag, the three times optic yet again, and then either the Serpent Rat for a better ADS time or the last stock here, Raider or Skeletal, whichever it is. I haven't even leveled it up fully because I don't feel like you necessarily have to have this just because this setup here with these five feels just fine to me. Uh, if you have the final stock on there or even the combat stock, you'll get some better mobility. You'll get that better sprint to fire. So that could be beneficial as well. But for a long range rifle like the C-58, this setup feels pretty good. Then for the Ram, same setup as always, nothing new here. Monolithic Suppressor, no brainer. Uh, the Ranger Barrel for better range and control. The Commando Foregrip for better control, 50 round mags, then also the VLK 3x Optic. Now for the XM4, like I mentioned earlier, we're pretty much using this as a secondary rifle. So we've got the base suppressor on there for the better mobility. You don't need agency because you're not really using this at a longer range. Uh, we actually have no barrel. Previously, you'd be using the Task Force because it gave you better strafe speed, but now it does not. It actually hurts your mobility, so we're no longer using a barrel here. If you wanted to, I'd probably say Ranger is your best bet, but uh, for a close range rifle, it's not super necessary. Instead, I go for Tiger Team. We want that better mobility. I've got the 60 round mag on there yet again, the Serpent Grip for uh, for that better ADS time, and then also the Raider Pad stock for that better mobility as well. Uh, if you wanted, you could also even try and throw on the Bruiser Grip there to get some better mobility overall. Maybe swap out like the Serpent Grip for that. Uh, but this setup, I feel like is a pretty solid one to be used as a secondary. Then for the AK-47, it's pretty much the same thing, but in this case, I do actually have the Bruiser Grip instead of using the uh, the Serpent Grip instead. So we've got the Base Suppressor, no barrel yet again for the same reasons as before. Tiger Team, we've got the Skeletal Stock, which is basically the same thing as Raider. Uh, the 45 round mag, because I feel like that's just fine. You don't really need a, a bigger magazine in this case. And then like I said, the Bruiser Grip for that better mobility as well. This thing is actually gonna move pretty quickly. You got really, really good speed on this one. Then finally, we've got the Krig. Pretty uh, standard setup here. Agency for all the same reasons as before. Uh, Ranger or mil spec is what you're going to look for here. Mil spec will give you the added control. Ranger is going to give you a bit better mobility. Uh, overall, you're not going to be slowed down as much. I've also got the 60 round mag, the Serpent Wrap for better mobility, and then also the three times optic get again. You really don't need an under barrel here. The recoil is just so easy, especially if you wanted to use the mil spec barrel. It's going to be even easier in that regard as well. So uh, very easy rifle here. This one's meant for a bit uh, of medium range and long range over close range, uh, but overall still one of the better rifles we have right now. But yeah, really between all those rifles, you can't go wrong right now. The entire category as a whole is very competitive. You love to see it. Uh, but that is going to wrap things up for today. If you enjoyed the video, let me know by dropping a like on it. would be seriously appreciated. And of course, if you're new here, feel free to subscribe. That way you can always stay up to date with everything going on in COD. Once again, and as always, thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, take it easy. Have an awesome rest of your day. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.